You know? But that's just the way God works. Isn't it true? Isn't it true? See, the greatest thing is, is I don't know about you guys, but I, I'm going to just talk for me. God, sometimes I really don't know exactly everything that you're doing, but I do know one thing. That call that you put in my life when you said, Stephen, I want you. Each and every one of you has put your name in there. You put your name there. And I'm going to tell you what. It don't matter what Brother Ed was dealing with. Remember all the great apostles? Everybody wants to be a great apostle. But what we read about the great apostles and all the great prophets, do you really want to? Brother Nick's lay, dealing with Ezekiel, and he laid how many years on his sides? Do we want to do that? Well, thank God for America, because that all happened before America. Because we think he changes. Only in certain aspects, he changes. What do I mean? Well, everything that was before the cross was one thing. And everything after the cross, we got mercy. We got mercy. God don't deal with us on this side of the cross. See, we don't know what it was like on the other side. Thank God. We can only read about it. And the greatest thing is all those people who had the Spirit of Christ in them, same as us, were looking, same as us, for that same thing. That city and maker who is God. Nothing's changed. The problem is, is we make it too hard. We make it hard. We don't make it hard for other people. We make it hard on ourselves. We do. We really do. So, is brother, brother Dave's here. I really want to thank you publicly for last week. I, I already talked to him on Thursday. I was driving to work. Never have issues with my YouTube driving to work. All of a sudden, I got this breaking up with issues. Whatever. But David, I bless you. You did a phenomenal job. You did exactly what the Lord told you to do. And it wasn't me. I just said, just grab a book. Out of all books to grab. Yeah. Out of all books to grab. Yeah. Hallelujah. So... Let me, let me get started. So now we're in chapter 6. 1 Samuel chapter 6. We have an issue here. The presence of God is, or the ark of God is out of Israel possession. Can I say it that way? And it's in the land of the Philistines. Oh, oh, oh. Well, where were you when God got you? Where were you when he called Stephen? I want you. But I was born and raised in the church. I'm a special case. Jesus was a special case. Really? The same call. Is on one, is on us all. That's a nice little rhyme. But it's true. So I want to read chapter 6, and I want to read it out of the Amplified. There's 21 verses, and then I, what I would like to do, and if I heard the Lord correctly, I'm going to break it down, because there's so much in this chapter 6 there's so much in here, and we can look at it 
in all the realms you want to look at. But I'm trying to look at it in the realms of God, what are you saying today? So if I go into next week dealing in chapter six, I want to hear what God, what are you saying today? Which includes of yesterday, today, and forevermore. Or we can wrap it up in one thing, in Christ. All right? Is that okay? 1 Samuel chapter 6, verse 1. You don't have to, everybody got it? Everybody got it? I'm reading out of the Amplified. Now the ark of the Lord had been in the country of the Philistines seven months. Can I ask you guys to do me a favor? Pray that I don't start commenting. Because we'll never get through the 21 verses. But you got to li li literally, please, here, if you got your Bibles, read. Ex you got to see what was being said. And you got to remember one thing. This is for our learning. We need to learn. Do I know everything? No. Does everybody in this room know everything? No, but we know one thing. We know Jesus. Who will bring, lead us into all truth. Because why? He is truth. Thank you, Kayla. Now the ark of the Lord had been in the country of the Philistines for seven months. And the Philistines were called for the, called for the priests and the diviners, the seers, we can go saying, what shall we do with the ark of the Lord? Question mark. Let us know how we can send it back to its place. They said, if you send it away, send away the ark of God of Israel, do not send it empty without a gift, but be sure to return it to him together with a guilt offering or a trespass offering. <coughs> All right. Then you will be healed. Remember what happened? They thought they were great. They thought that, hey, we conquered the Christian. I mean, we conquered Israel. We conquered them. We took their God because we conquered them and we stuck them in with our God. And guess what happened? They found out who really the God was. Every knee. All right. Then you will be healed and it will be known to you why his hand is not removed from you. Then they said, what shall the guilt offering be which shall be re what which shall return to him? They answered. Listen to what they answered with. Listen to this. Five golden tumors. Or, what a picture. God give us a mind. Right? The greatest thing is now, imagination. You can go to Disney World, imagination. But golden tumors. Think of what that would look like. All right? And five golden mice. According to the number of the lords of the governors of the Philistines, for, for, one, for one plague was on all of you and on your lords. I want to comment right now, but I'm not going to. So you shall make replicas of your tumors and of your mice, of your tumors, and of your mice. It gets pretty personal there. 
Still a sight to see, right? Sight for sore eyes. Um, excuse me, I just lost my... I told you I shouldn't. The five golden tumors and five, five golden mice, according to the number of the lords of the governors of the Philistines. One for, for one plague was on all of you and your lords. So shall make replicas of your tumors and of your mice that ravage the land. And... Gosh, I want to comment. God, help me, please. And give the glory of God and, and give glory to God of Israel. Perhaps he will lighten his hand of judgment on you and your gods and your land. I'm telling you, if nobody else wants to comment, I can. Why then do you harden your hearts? allowing pride to cause your downfall. Just as the Egyptians and, and, and Pharaoh hardened their hearts when he had severely dealt with them and mocked them, and, and mocked them, did they not allow the people of Israel to go and they departed? Listen, they went through all that mess, and guess what? They should have let them go back before the first plague come, right? How slow are we to learn? Yes, now then, make a new cart. Prepare two milk cows on which a yoke has never been placed. And hitch the cows to the cart and take their calves back home away from them. Then take the ark of the Lord and put it on the cart. Put the articles of gold which you are returning to him as a guilt offering in a box besides it. Then send it away without a driver. Where are we in? First Samuel. The end of Judges was what? What's the very last thing said in Judges? Where there's no driver, I mean king. The people do whatever they Darn well want to please and do. Thinking they're doing the, never mind, the will of God. Then take that and put it on the cart. Send it away. But watch. If it goes up by the way of its own territory to Beth Shemesh, then you will know that, that you will know that he has done us this great evil. But if not, then we will know that it was not his hand that struck us. This disaster happened to us by chance. We went to MGM. And the men did so and took two milk cows and hitched them to the cart and corralled their calves at home. They put the ark of the Lord on the cart and the box containing the golden mice and the replicas of the tumors and the cows went straight towards Beth Shemesh along the highway, lowering as they went and did not turn to the right or to the left and the Philistines lowered their governors Follow them to the borders of Beth Shemesh. Verse 13. Now the men of Beth Shemesh were gathering their wheat harvest in the valley. Shall I repeat that? Now the men of Beth Shemesh were gathering their wheat harvest in the valley. And they looked up and saw the ark and rejoiced to see it. The cart came into the field of Joshua of Beth Shemesh and stopped there. Go figure. A large stone, go figure, was there. And the men split up the wood of the cart for firewood and offered the cows Living sacrifice, never mind. 
a burnt offering to the Lord. The Levites had taken down the ark of the Lord and the box beside it in which were the articles of gold and put them on, a, on the large stone. And the men of Beshmesh offered burnt offerings and made sacrifices that day unto the Lord. When the five lords of the Philistines saw what happened, they returned to Ekron that day. They have to go back. They can't go. Never mind. These are the golden tumors which the Philistines returned as a guilt offering to the Lord. One for Ashdod, one for Gaza, one for Ashelon, and one for Gath, and one for Ekron. Five chief cities of the Philistines. Or you're, never mind. Also the golden mice were according to the numbers of all the cities of the Philistines belonging to the five lords, both fortified cities and unwalled country villages. The large stone on which the Levites set the Ark of the Lord remains a witness to this day in the field of Joshua, the best Shemite. Yep, and we can all say amen to that one. All right, amen. <laughs> Did you miss it? Did you miss it? It happened. Never mind, I said I wouldn't comment. And the Lord struck down some of the men of Beshemet. Oh, here we go. This is sad. This is sad. The Lord struck down some of the men of Beth Shemesh because they have looked into the, into the ark of the Lord. Doesn't he tell you to look into him? No. What's, what's the difference? Oh, we're on this side. Never mind. He struck down 50,070 men among the people. And the people mourned because the Lord had struck the people with a great slaughter. Verse 20, the men of Bethlehem said, Who is able to stand before the Lord, this holy God? I'm the only one in this room? Am I the only one in this room? Who is? So they sent, listen to this. And who shall he go up for us? Verse 21. So they sent the messengers to the residents of, I had it all figured out in my mind, Kyratha Jerim, saying, the Philistines have returned. They've returned it. They were nice people. They returned it. The ark of the Lord. Come down and take it up to you. It's, a, it's amazing. I'll comment on this one. It's amazing they never mentioned that there was a great slaughter because of what they did. They just said, hey, come get it. Come get it. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for this, your word. Back up to verse 1. I'm probably only going to get through the first six verses, if I'm that lucky. By chance. I'm going to do this. Let me read what Brother Kelly said. Can I do that? Yeah. I'm going to do that. Yeah. I can Brother Kelly says this, the principle of the returning of the, of the ark from the Philistines. In this chapter are revealed the mentality of the world and the kingdom of darkness, arrogance, and the return of the ark of the covenant. Did you hear that? I was going to put something. It, it don't matter if you're in the world or in the church world. It, it's the world. God has a way of doing it. And there's only one way. 
This is to be compared with 1 Chronicles 13. We'll get into 1 Chronicles. I was going to go there, but we'll get into that. In contrast with 1 Chronicles 15. We'll get into that when we get there. If anybody don't know what they are, go read them. Go read them. I can say this. Uh, yes, I'll, I'll say it, God. The first way, chapter 13, extremes. Can I say it this way? Extremes. The church wanted to do it the way the world did it. And guess what happened? They had all the right stuff going on. But God always has a threshing floor or a threshold. Right, Ed? God always does. For what purpose? To test us, to try us, to see what we're made of. To see if it's real or not. Chapter 15, two chapters away, guess what? They got it the right way. This is, this is the principle of restoration of the ark. It's the principle of the restoration of the ark. We can go back. I can go back and read what they are. The ark of the covenant represents the throne of God in the earth. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. The presence of God in Christ by the spirit in the midst of the redeemed. The glory of God revealed in a divine order, worship, and ministry. 1 Corinthians 14.40 The government of God in the earth, Matthew 6.10 and Jeremiah 23.5 The fullness of, of the Godhead bodily revealed in Jesus, Colossians 1, 19, I'm chapter 1, verse 19, and chapter 2. Verse 9. The enthroned Jesus as King of kings and Lord of lords and God of God. The total and complete victory of Jesus Christ over all his en enemies. Romans 5.10. The glorious church in perfection, maturity, grown up, not babies, not tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine or whatever things crosses our minds. They are led of the Spirit, the Spirit, not a Spirit, but the Spirit, the true Spirit, the one, the only. Ephesians 4, 13, chapters 5, 25 through 27. The Melchizedek priesthood, the Melchizedek priesthood ministry of Christ, head and body, Hebrews 7. The kingdom of God in power and manifestations 1 Corinthians 4.20 and Matthew 1 and 23. All right? So this is the restoration of the ark. So I don't know who's doing YouTube. If they want to put that down on the title, they can. All right? So let's go to Acts 3. Verse 19. This is, all on, this is all Brother Kelly's. I'm just reading what he has. All right? And then, then we'll see. I'm just going with it. All right? So, this is, chapter 3 is when, remember when Peter, James, and John, they went into the, into the temple and they healed the man. You heal somebody and guess what? You get persecuted. I could never figure that out. Right? Right? I've been healed. Jesus healed me, and I get persecuted. Sometimes it's right here. It's that red dragon telling us, no, you're not. But really, oh, yes, I am. Oh, yes, I am. I am the son of the most high God. All right, so he gets all the way down to 
verse 17. And now, brethren, I wrought that through the ignorance you did, the, you did it, as did also your rulers. But those things which God before had showed us through the mouth of all his prophets. So there's always a picture. God has a picture. We just need to see and hear what the picture is saying and doing. That Christ should suffer, he has so fulfilled. So he fulfilled it. It's finished. It's a finished work. God, through Jesus, finished that part of it, the sufferings. But if we're going to be the partakers of him, we don't like the rest of the verse. Do we? We don't like the suffering parts. We don't like the suffering. Anybody in the right mind won't like the suffering parts. But what was, what's worse, the suffering parts? Or remember the rich run, young ruler? What's, what's worse? Or the man who refused to put on the wedding garment? All the same principle. All the same principle, right? But God, thank God. Verse 19. So repent. Change our mind. Change the way we're looking at things. Change it. Change it. And be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. God, we need that. We need that. We really do need that. But morning by morning, His mercies are new every morning. Amen. Every morning. While I'm going through this, it doesn't matter what you're going through. Guess what? His mercy is there morning by morning. You can take a drink of life freely. It's all in the way we want to look at it. How do you want to keep looking at it? Stephen, how do you want to keep looking at it? I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to me. How do you want to keep looking at it? We've loved mercy. See, we literally think that the sufferings in our minds is what's going to over... It's, that's totally contrary of what the Scripture is saying. That's just plain torture. God's not out to torture us. God's out to get the diamond in the rough so that he can put it on his finger or to keep us in the fire because that gold's got to be purified for his use. Remember, Stephen, yes, Lord, that's all I wanted to hear. You got to remember, we're dealing with Samuel. What did Samuel do? He ran three times because he kept hearing a voice. But finally, the man who was going to lose his life gave him some advice and say one thing, yes, Lord, your servant hears. And that's what God's trying to get this house to do, is to hear what he is saying. I would love to get out of for Samuel. I really would love to. But you know what he keeps telling me? You haven't heard fully everything that's been said in this book. You know what's crazy? You can listen to Brother Ed, Brother Nick. You can go on their website. You can listen to Brother Steve. Basically, everybody who that we're acquainted with is all sounding the same. It's all about hearing. We're too busy running and with nothing to say because we haven't sat long enough to hear. But I got a job. I got to do that. That's all right. He knows. I think I said this last night to Savani. 
He knows our mortality. He knows that we have to do all this stuff. But in the midst of that, he just wants to be able to say, Stephen, you know, all you had to say is, yes, Lord, I hear you. Right in the midst of doing all that. You heard our pastor used to say the mo most of his great revelations he got from underneath of a car. Mines with the chickens. We'll stay off of that one. God's still talking to me about the chickens. And I got rid of two roosters yesterday. And God spoke to me when I was getting rid of them. Two out of the three. Repent, therefore, yes, and, com and be converted in, in your sins that may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, just not Jesus, but Christ, the whole complete man. See, we can keep looking at just Jesus, but there was more than just Jesus. He's just the head waiting for the rest of the body to come out. And he shall say, Jesus, which before was preached to you, whom the heavens must receive until the times of restitution of all things. So there is a time slot, but it's not up to us to know when it is. All we have to be is, yes, Lord, I hear you. Of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Amen? So back to 1 Samuel chapter 6. Chapter 2, I mean, verse 2, the Philistines called, the priest, called for the priest and the diviner, saying, What shall we do to the ark of the Lord? Tell us wherewith we shall send it to its place. Brother Kelly's got a nice little note here. It's, it's pretty good because I highlighted it. Back into the heart of men. Get it back to the heart of me. Remember that? Remember just, just at the end of praise and worship, I said, did you feel that sense that God was here? How did you feel that? That was in your heart. That was in your heart. These people, seven months, they were without the box. So they were looking at a natural thing, a piece of furniture they were looking at. It wasn't in their heart. Can you go seven months without the presence of God in your life? Try it. Try it. We can run from it. We think we can do whatever we want to do and get away from the presence of God. But once he's put it, that seed inside that heart, David said, if I make my bed in hell, you're there. And you know what? We like hell because most of us live there all the time. That one went over like a lead book. But that's the truth. We love misery. But he's greater. See, this is, this, is so, this is what's so amazing about God on this side of the cross. We're on the sunshine side. Can I say it that way? Right? We've been taught well, right? We're on this side of the cross. We're where the sun is. We're not in the shadows. These poor people. But guess what? We would never know Nothing if it wasn't for there was a 
pioneer who went before us. See, we're so eagerly to throw the baby out with the bathwater. I could go to... So here's what, that's what he, he said. This is amazing. The ark of the Lord was in the country of the Philistines for seven months. Can I break these two words down? Seven and months? We all know what they are, right? But literally, can I... I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Because not everybody in this room really knows. I mean, we've heard it, but do you really know? So 7651, this is a strong, this is for seven, the number seven, all right? From 7650, it's a primitive cardinal number. It's got some weight to it. Seven. As the full, as the sacred full one. Also, adverbially, adverbably, seven times by implication a week, an extension of a indefinite number. All right. So let's go to. I like breaking them down to see where they come from. It's a primitive root properly to be complete. It's complete. So basically, what God's here is saying, okay, Philistines, you had my presence for seven months. It's complete now. I'm done dealing with you. I'm done dealing with the ones who like rolling in the dust. That's basically what he's saying. I'm done. Because it's complete. He did what he was supposed to do. Jesus went into the earth or into the grave and did what he was supposed to do. But he didn't stay there. It's not staying with the Philistines. It's coming out. It's coming out. But the world only knows how to do it their way. But God has a way to doing it, and we can't be like the world. You're in the world, but don't be of the world. Don't look like them, act like them, or whatever. But we like, we like this. Even I like this. Even Samuel and Jesus were in good standing with everybody around them. Really? When Samuel went to Jesse's house, did you come in peace? So there must have been something what was going on before that, before that man showed up at Jesse's house. What, what was Jesus doing? Healing people and getting persecuted. Months. From 2318, new moon. A month to be new or to rebuild. God's doing something new. God's going to do something new. They were there seven months, and God said, you know, all right, I'm done with this place. I'm going back to where I belong. Death couldn't hold them. Death couldn't hold them. Remember Jonah was in the fish? And guess what happened? Three days later, when he came to his, see, we like, you know, we've heard it, we came to his right mind, but the fish couldn't hold him anymore. Death couldn't hold him. The quicker we get that under control, the better off most of our lives will be. No matter 
life or death can separate us from the love of God. Not even our stinking thinking can separate us from the love of God. If our heart fails, he's still greater than our heart. So why do we act the way we do? You're right. I, I'm going to go back to Brother, Brother Kelly's. The ark was with the Philistines for seven months to shame Israel who made no attempts to recover it. Remember? It was just a piece of furniture to them. But how many of us, when we do something bad, we go to the extremes. And all he's saying back in Acts 3 was to repent, change the way you think. You know you messed up. Don't wallow in it. Just change the way it is, and guess what? But you have to go. See, there's always a response on our side. I could jump down to the emeralds, the golden emeralds or tumors. You break that word down. Do I want to do that? I'll wait. Oh, expense. The priests, the ministers, 2 Corinthians 11, 2 through 15, I mean 12 through 15, the diviners gave their ungodly Counsel. How many of, of us have done that? Listen to this one. These had some knowledge of Jehovah's Way mixture. Brother, this is Brother Kelly. And suggesting that the trespass offering, Leviticus 5, Sent back with the ark. So you got to give something back to God because you messed up. We've heard that all our lives. But all God telling us to do is just to repent. Just change your mind. Don't worry about it. That was the old. You know, we're on this side. We're in the sunshine state. Does it make it? No, don't make it any lighter. The bottom line here is don't keep doing what you did. Change it. Change your mind. Move on from it. What if I keep going through it? Well, then you didn't learn the first time. But God's merciful. He's mercy. Aren't you glad you're on this side? Aren't you glad you're on this side? Because God's not out there just killing people because they do things bad. That's not the type of God we serve. We serve a loving God. We do. But there are consequences. But guess what? He knows our heart. If your heart is true, your heart is pure, and you're moving forward with him. Where were you? I keep coming back to the same question. Where were you when he called your name? Remember the pit you were dug out of? But guess what? Thank God that you're out of the pit. You're out of that grave. This would contrast with the five golden emeralds along with five golden mice. This typifies a counterfeit five-fold ministry. This is Brother Kelly. 
I can say that, right, Brother Ed? You say it, so I can say it. This is Brother Kelly. Anybody have an issue? You can go talk to Brother Kelly. <laughs> Saul had an issue, and he wanted to talk to Samuel. He didn't like what Samuel had to say when he came back and talked to him, did he? So we better watch what we say. Because if you're taking somebody away from the presence of the Almighty to come back to this realm to fix your problem, when God's already told you how to fix your problem? Stephen, that's... Stop. This typifies a counterfeit fivefold ministry, Ephesians 4.11, that ministers pain and death and which is unclean, a mouse. Leviticus 11.29. This looks like God. It's gold. It's got to be God. It's gold. But it has no life. Remember Ichabod? Ichabod killed a woman. God's not into killing people. God's into giving life. I've come to give you life. I come to give it to you much more abundantly. How much more life can you get? It's not for us to do things. It's him. The life is him. Remember that. Remember that. The life is him. It's not the things of this world. It only can satisfy for a moment a mouse. These are but images, likenesses, or shadows and are not real. These false ministries are mice that mar, corrupt, or destroy the land. The land is Jesus. They come and preach another Jesus. Even Paul said, if I even come and preach another Jesus. So that means that tells that's this is telling me you need to know no man after the flesh. It's only by the spirit. All right. I'm going to hit this Holy cow, it's already one o'clock. Dale, I might beat you on this one. And they said, if you send it away, blah, 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 trespass offering, verse, verse 4. Then they said, what shall the trespass offering which thou shalt return to him? They answered, five golden emrods. This word emrod is from 6075. It's a... Tuner, T-U-R-I-O-R. Jen? All right, whatever, nobody knows. It's a mound. That is a fortress, an emrod, a fort, a stronghold. How many of us have a, we take a mound and turn it into a mountain? How many of us have, strongholds in our life. What are golden? That God, you can touch anything you want except for that. And God's saying, I want that because you said, yes, Stephen. Mice or mouse from the same as 5908 in the secondary sense of attacking. 
attacking. If somebody comes up against you and doesn't say something that, or somebody comes against you, what's your first instinct? Instinct is to attack. And God wants you to lay it down. Remember? Remember this one thing. He went to the cross and didn't say a word. Didn't say a word. Stephen healed somebody. I mean, Stephen did what? He was just filled with the Holy Ghost, doing what God told him, was telling him to do, helping there. They had an issue. He filled in. They picked him. He didn't even pick them. He didn't say, I'm going to do it. They picked them, and he was doing what they told him they wanted he to do, but he was filled with the Holy Ghost, and they didn't like that, and what did they do? They stoned him. And what was his last words? Jesus, forgive him. That golden thing, attacking It's one of the hardest things to do because we always want to be, we were told to come up higher, be on top. We're the head, not the tail. It's not a very popular message. It really isn't. But you know one thing it does? It'll give you life. It'll give you life. It'll give you life. How? I don't know. I'm, just, I'm still walking it out. I'm learning just like you guys. I'm walking it out. Doing some crazy little thing called, I believe it. I don't understand it fully, but God, I believe what your word says because your word does not come back void. It might not go my way, but that's all right. I'll get over it after my wallowing. As soon as I come to my right mind of repenting, maybe I'll get some smiles on my face. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe I'll be like this all my life because I've been like this all my life. Mopey. But no. He who is set free is free indeed. Hallelujah. So I'll tell you what. If I can get free, then you all can get free. But you don't know. I don't care. I don't want to know. I really don't want to know. Because 90% of our problem, we don't want to really tell anybody it, but we need to tell the one who can really fix it. Tell him. Don't tell somebody else. Tell him. And don't expect it to happen immediately. Because as soon as you expect it to happen immediately, he's going to take 40 years to fix it. But there's a great verse in the Bible that the lady kept bugging the king, kept bugging the king, kept, kept bugging the king, and finally the king said, okay, I'll grant you what you want. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One o'clock. One o'clock. Well, Lord, I hope I got everything across what you